Salute to all the movie and TV cinema supporters. Welcome back to Power Book Multiverse and Cinema Show, where you get the latest in Power Universe and Cinema Breakdown. Hello to everybody out there today. Welcome to Power Book Multiverse and Cinema Church. And although we are here today for a sad occasion, I want to let y'all know that we are going to celebrate life and not death. Now, we are here to celebrate Detective Malcolm Howard. Um, he is a man without flaws, but he also was a man who did a lot of great things within his life. So today, if you have any problems with Malcolm Howard, what I suggest you do to let that weight off you, my brother or my sister, is take a piece of paper, write his name on it, take a lighter, set a flame to it, and just let it go. Let it burn. Um, today, we are here to talk about a life that was taken too soon. Now, a lot of y'all only see what happened with Malcolm Howard on Raising Canaan, but y'all don't understand the man behind the badge, and I am here to fill y'all in on a little bit of that today. Malcolm Howard McCall was born to ex-NBA player father, Zeke McCall, and mother, Nona McCall. Born in the hard streets of Jamaica, Queens, his parents wanted to make a way for him. So what they did was they went to Cali for a little while and Malcolm, known on the West Coast as Quincy, was able to get a scholarship to USC for basketball. Coming out of high school, he was an All-American. I see a lot of shocked face around here in this church today. That's because y'all didn't know the real Malcolm Howard. All we saw is what they put on him on Raising Canaan. After playing one year basketball at USC, he decided to go to the NBA. He entered the draft and he was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, he went up for a dunk on one play and he broke his leg and that was the end of his basketball career. But he didn't let that stop him from his purpose. After a little time and recovery, Malcolm decided that he wanted to serve the people. So he ended up going to Cincinnati to start his journey in law enforcement. While out in Cincinnati, he was able to bring down one of the biggest drug empires ever and bring peace to a city that a man named God, the blasphemy of that man to name himself that and bring all that chaos to that city. Detective Jay Reed, as he was known in Cincinnati because he was undercover, after bringing peace to that town, he decided to go speak and work at one of the local academies, training up some of the finest officers you've ever seen to work in that Cincinnati street. And if y'all think I'm lying, just look up Operation In Too Deep the movie. It was based on the life of Detective Malcolm Howard. See, I told y'all when I got up here, we was gonna celebrate life today and not death. After a short stint of working at that academy for police out in Cincinnati, he decided that he needed to do some good for his own people. So he went back to his roots in South Jamaica, Queens, New York. Now I've been hearing the rumors about the things that was going on with Detective Howard out here in Queen. I heard about what was going on with him and Rock. I heard about the rumor of what he allegedly did to Detective Burke, but what I will tell y'all here today, I tell y'all the same thing that Jesus told the multitude. He without sin cast the first stone. I see a lot of y'all sitting out there today with judgment on your face for Detective Malcolm Howard. And don't forget that I had to have y'all in counseling to get y'all self together and to get y'all right. Marvin, I don't know what you standing out there looking like that for. You had a drug problem. And Rock, why you looking like that? You hear the rumors in the streets. You know what they saying you did. But that's neither here nor there. You lied to your son his whole life. Detective Howard didn't even get a chance to be with his son. But that's not for the funeral. But I just want y'all to know I don't want y'all here judging this brother. He did what he had to do in order to survive. And at the end of his life, he was able to find God. And even with some of the missteps in his life, I don't think God judged this brother. I think when he took that fatal shot to the head, that heaven opened up its gates and let that brother in because he made his peace. At the end of his life, we were having deeper conversations, conversations about life, conversations about family. But when he was younger, 
We would talk about money. We would talk about career. We would talk about where he would see himself in the next 25 years. Let me share a story with y'all about Detective Malcolm Howard. When he was on the West Coast playing for USC, he would often call me and he would want to talk about his dreams and what he would see himself being. And he would tell me he want to go to the NBA and play in the NBA for 10, maybe 15 years. And he want to be better than Michael Jordan. And he want to be better than Dr. Julius Irvin. And I told him all of that is fine. But what are you going to do for your community, brother? How are you going to serve your people? And being a young man and thinking that he had more time ahead of him than behind him, he told me that I'll get to that when I get to that. But sometime in life, God has a way of redirecting your path. Now, he was able to go to the NBA, get a big check, but he had a huge injury as soon as he started. And that injury allowed him to be set on a path that was God's will, not his will. Life sometimes is like a roller coaster. You have your ups, you have your downs, but at the end of it all, at some point, you have to get off the ride. And it was his time to get off the ride, but he didn't get off the ride before he made his mark on society. So today, as you guys leave out of this funeral proceeding and some of you will be going to the burial, I don't want you to cry because Detective Malcolm Howard is gone. I want you to smile because he lived a full and illustrious life. And not only did he get a chance to accomplish some of his dreams, but he also was able to serve the community he loved. So with that being said, that will be all the time I will take with you guys today. The family do have refreshments in the back for anybody who want to go and get any. Um, we will be passing out obituaries. Do not ask for two because you're not getting two. Everybody get one. Your kid can't have one. And if they not here, they can't have one. These things ain't cheap. You know what? The last thing I want to let y'all know before y'all get up out of here is that even though he was very, 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 very flawed and rock, I apologize for calling you out earlier. I heard about the rumors from when you were 16 and 17. But he loved his community. And before he left, he expressed to me how much he loved his son, Kanan Starks, and he wanted the best for him. Now, I've seen how that young man has been running around the community and rock. You need to either put him in the mentoring program or get him out of South Jamaica, Queens, or he will die in these streets. But that's that's not for today. That's not for today. Um, but as we close out. Rest in peace to Detective Malcolm Howard, a father, a son, a detective, a ex-NBA player. If I could say one last thing to him and he could somehow hear me up in heaven say it, I would say, Malcolm, my son, job well done. If you like this Power Book Multiverse Cinema breakdown and you're looking forward to more TV shows and movie breakdowns just like this, click the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell.